Let us pray. Gracious loving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks this chance to explore your word. We give you thanks that you speak to us. God, may we be faithful in our task of hearing you and interpreting you. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Scripture Talk. I don't have a voice, so <laughs> there's that. I Look, I talk a lot for a living, and this allergy season thing is hitting me hard. Um, so, yeah, forgive me, but I, I am, it doesn't sound like it. This is like night and day from what I sounded at, sounded like 24 <laughs> hours ago when I was preaching. Um, I am Pastor Trey Comstock. Uh, with me as ever is... Pastor Scott Ketchup. And on the ones and twos is Brother Ken. Thank you for <laughs> filling in. Um, by next week, we should have more of our normal crew out <laughs> back. Uh, Stacy is still um, being with family after the death of his mother, um, and uh, Brandy was not feeling well this evening. And so keep Brandy in your prayers. Uh, the ministry team is suffering at the moment. <laughs> uh, I, we, you know, I guess you know it's been 18 months of hard pushing yeah. um, to get through everything we've had to get through. And so I suspect we're starting to pay some health prices, and I think I'm starting to pay the price of my voice. Um, but yeah, cause this is your what fourth Zoom of the day. This is my fourth Zoom today. Yeah, uh, yeah this is the fourth Zoom or stream today. Um, I, 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 I don't think I have any tomorrow, which sounds great. I just have three meetings, <laughs> uh, which are like Zooms, but they happen in the real world, not in a screen. I know it's very, what? It's, it's very strange. This you know, brave new world we live in, but I have at least three meetings. I have one stream and two meetings tomorrow. Um, so anyways, this is Scripture Talk, where, uh, try as I might, I'm going to try to talk about Scripture, um, or squeak about Scripture as it might go this evening. Um, and our Scripture uh, this evening is uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 11. Acts 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. <laughs> In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of pr the promise of the father this he said is what you have heard from me for john baptized with water but you will be baptized with the holy spirit not many days from now so when they had come together they asked him lord is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom of israel he replied it is not for you to know the times or the periods the father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out, out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white stood by. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking upwards towards heaven? This Jesus, whom... Whom, who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go. So Scott and I were joking before the show. This is literally like previously on Luke. Um, this is the, 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 the law of the Theophilus previously on Luke and it's summary of the gospel and then a replay of the final cliffhanger ending of the book of Luke to then translate into Luke 2 Acts of the Apostles. This is one of those clear things where like you need to read Luke and Luke and Acts as basically two seasons of a television show. Right. Uh, one season focused on like at least a couple seasons focused on the life of Christ, and a couple of, and really it's two seasons. Acts is really two seasons, right? There's everything before Paul, and then there's the Paul season, yeah. right? So it's a four season arc um, of Luke and Acts the Apostle and Luke two Acts the Apostles, and so this is the like. We are. This is the season opener for season two, season three, where it is the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus has ascended, and so we have a flashback scene um, in previously <laughs> on Luke. But saying that, right? This still has the this this intro to Acts is still the intro to Acts. It is previously yeah. on Luke, but it is already building. It is building that bridge between the two books because it is saying, okay, this is what Jesus did. 
And what Jesus did then resulted in you all being sent on, being given this, this mission, this twofold mission, right? Um, don't stand there looking, uh, don't stand there looking up. You're going to get rain up your nose. Yeah. Um, and wait for the Holy Spirit because your work hasn't stopped. You're supposed to carry it to, you know, Jer- what is it? Uh, Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, right? This is already laying the groundwork of... Jesus' ascension doesn't end it. This next thing is coming, and this next thing is going to propel you into mission. You know, I I uh, like how literal the disciples are taking everything Jesus is saying to them at this point. It's like they they have kind of grasped. You, you see through Luke and the other Gospels that they're constantly confused by what Jesus said. What's he really mean? Huh. Yeah. What's he saying? And all. And, and, and there's that, but not sure to believe when he. Here we see him ascending, I'll be back. So they stand there waiting, uh-huh. staring in the sky, uh-huh. going, hmm, I wonder how long this is going to take. And, <laughs> until someone has to show up and go, okay, he didn't necessarily mean right this second, <laughs> let's go. But it's also just go with his instructions of one, waiting for what's about to happen so that you can go and continue to do this mission with what's been promised, which is the Holy Spirit. And this is where we get, you know, that, that time where we see when we come into uh, the day of Pentecost of where you get this idea that they have been hanging out in this room waiting. Staring for, at each you other. Know, staring at each other, spending time in prayer, doing something, going, okay, we we're told to wait, so here we are. And uh, so we're seeing them stepping out with what they know on what he's doing and just this awesome aspect of, we really believe everything he says. And if he said it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And it might be right now. Well, and I think that apocalyptic urgency is something that the New Testament as a whole, and certainly the back half of the New Testament, wrestles with a lot. Yeah. Right? You see the early church, like Jesus is coming back. When? Right? Is it, And as we often joke, is it Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Um, should I buy milk? Am I going to need eggs? Um, do I need to get married? Do I need to get a job? Do I need to have kids? Or is it just like all about the mission because Jesus is coming back? And a good chunk of the history of the early church is them sitting back and going, well, um, we thought it was going to, we thought soon meant this, but really I think soon means this. And, and Paul even has to go on his own journey of that. And but you see that start, you see that starting to work and the angel's going, no, no, he's going to come back. But like, Y'all got some work to do to like lay the groundwork for that. Um, this is not like your idea. You already see the angels preparing the folks for um, a, a differential definition of what soon means. Yeah. Uh, you can almost look at Paul's writings and see where he kind of changes that. Because, you know, a, a lot of what you're, you're saying you know, is what Paul was pointing out with the the way he talked of just it's immediate it's coming soon it's a sprint and at some point they started realizing maybe instead of a sprint it's a marathon and what heck of a marathon because we're still here waiting but uh we know that it is going to happen because we've seen the result this is what comes out yeah, yeah. and the rest of acts the result of what happens in next week's episode well right and, and we and, see we and see so you kind of have a bit of a foreshadowing dropped here well, right, and you see, you see that set up of this is that like this is the transition point. This is the hinge, right? Mm-hmm. On one side of the hinge is is Jesus led ministry, right? Mm-hmm. It is Jesus is teaching. It is Jesus is walking. It is Jesus is doing the healing. It is the Spirit of God rests with Jesus, right? Um, here you're seeing um, you're seeing that trend. This is the transitional stage. This is. Um, I have been doing this for you this whole time. Um, now the mission is coming to you. Soon the power will be with you. This is the, this is the captain point of the power is yours. Right. right? Um, which we've talked about before. It all goes back into the rings. They all go back into the rings. This is the power is yours. Um, the, the ascension is... The, captain Planet just rips off the ascension. Essentially. <laughs> captain Planet is just ripping off the ascension. Unfortunately, I've blown that joke already. Um, which Because yeah. that could work for the ascension too. Um, but so all the stuff I've been doing in this area, now you're going to take to all the places we haven't gone yet. Um, stand by, be ready. But this, this, this is rhetorically like structurally, this is a hinge point Yeah. of, 
you know, this is a this is a good season opener, right? To take us from the end of season two um, to the work of season three, which is going to be um, the Jerusalem-based church, and then season four, um, pa- the Pauline Church. Mm-hmm. And uh, and there's some doctrinal issues that's going on here that uh, will get fleshed out in the next few chapters. But you know, or earlier on, Jesus has said that it would be better for them for him to go back to the Father. Yeah. And so what we're looking at while Jesus was here in a uh, human form as as he was he was 100% human he was limited by that right and all and so you know we saw that in in his ministry you know like with Lazarus well Jesus had you been here why did it take you so long to get here look i can only walk at 3.5 <laughs> miles an hour <laughs> right. they they have not put the high speed rail in yet right and so th- there was limits even to what Jesus could do. Now you saw that in the power of God working through the Holy Spirit in him, there and, wasn't. And also it's self-imposed limits, right? Yeah, you know? yeah it is. But he had self-imposed he had limits to yeah. the limits of a human life, yes. And so you have him going back up so that those limits are removed and the ascending of the Holy Spirit that'll, and it works when I don't smack my mic with my hands as I'm talking. Um, but that's what's about to happen. That's what he's hinting to. That's what we see going. Jesus is going up and there's about to be a definite change in the access to God because so up to this point they've realized Jesus is God and so right. their their access and what they're thinking is literally this face-to-face interaction with Jesus yeah which is now gonna change right and and you gotta you gotta again we know what happens They've been told what's going to happen. And they don't know yet. But they don't really know, right? They don't they don't know what this is gonna look like. We know we know the end of the story. We know the Holy Spirit comes. We know the age that we live in now is initiated. We know it all. But they are uncertain and right it's I always remember I always think about that like season in the upper room, um, yeah. you know, between um uh, the Ascension in Pentecost being like really sweaty and weird because, you know, it's a hundred people in this, like not all that large a space staring at each other going, is something happening yet? Is, is something happening yet? Is something happening yet? Right. And then eventually, obviously it does, but um, they are, they land in this really uncertain, they land in this uncertain place because they don't know what it's going to look like. Um, and what has not been their responsibility at all is now, feels like it's going to be totally their responsibility. Now it isn't, right? The Holy Spirit shows up and so God takes over in a different way. Um, but there is that. I mean, it is, they're in an awkward stage with the Ascension. Right. I mean, so he gives some instructions, but let's be honest. They're kind of vague. Take my message to all the world. Right. I mean, okay. Literally. He even breaks it down into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Samaria. And, and the ends, ends of, of the, the world. Earth. There you go. By the way, um, the by the how? way, the Ethiopian eunuch is the ends of the earth. Well, yeah, especially right. So that there. so that's a detail we left out of that because we just we hadn't talked about Acts chapter one yet. Yeah. But but um, you know, we see it go. We see it go to Samaria. We mm-hmm. see that happen. Um, and the Ethiopian eunuch is part of this idea of the ends of the earth because Ethiopia yeah, was the ends of the earth. Yeah, like uh, there and like what up into Spain, it, 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 kind of not too far from that area. They didn't really have a large understanding. Yeah, well, there's not 1492. Well, literally, there's a there's a place at the tip of the northern tip of Spain called Findisterra, mm-hmm. the end of land, the end of the... There's literally yeah. a town in Spain called the ends of the earth because until you discover the new world, uh, and I don't really understand how far the, you know, Horn of Africa sticks out, yeah. um, but like they don't really quite understand how, like the shape of Africa. So if you don't understand the shape of Africa and you don't think there is a North and South America, um, there's a point that the, the, the westernmost tip of Spain out over Portugal is Findisterra. I've been there. Um, it's another, like, it's the um, secular ending to the Camino de Santiago. So the spiritual mm-hmm. ending, the traditional Christian ending um, for the uh, Camino de Santiago is Santiago de Compostela with the um, cathedral uh, to Saint to James, brother of Christ, um, because they believe his body floated there in a stone boat. It didn't. Um, <laughs> whatever. Right. Um, it's this beautiful thing that Christians have been doing for since like the year 900. Um, which weirdly, very long after uh, James' brother of Christ died. 
Um, but the like secular or pagan ending is to go 50 kilometers further, go to Findisterra, stand on the beach and burn all your clothes. I did not do that part because uh, I was, you know, again, I was a, I was a Christian pilgrim. Um, and so, yeah, like that was the ends of the earth. But so one of the like key pieces of this is, is kind of the awkwardness to me is that awkwardness of what they're sitting in, that they've been given this mission um it's not always clear how they're going to do that mission and so there is an expectance um and a call to patience and while we live in a world that is full of the holy spirit there is still an expectance for us and a patience right we have been told that christ will come in final victory and we will feast at god's heavenly banquet we are told that evil will be vanquished and yet sometimes um, it doesn't always feel that way. When we read those kind of numbers, like, oh, the church in America is shrinking. Oh, my God, is the church dying? Well, no, it can't. Um, and so there is like a patience and an expectation, even for us in the modern age, even living with the Holy Spirit, to understand that we live in a different version of um, of, of, of patience and expectation than they do. Um, but we still live in patience and expectation. And, and, you know, even today, I've, I've been in some of those meetings where you're just sitting there awkwardly trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. Uh-huh. Well, uh, we know we're supposed to minister to people, but what is the right way? And uh, have we completed the mission? Have we been to the all the ends of the earth, per se? I mean, you would look at it today and think, man, is there anywhere that there hasn't been the gospel at some point preached? And I don't know. I, I I think there's probably some areas, but then again, I'm, who knows? Because that's the, the fun of those places that we haven't talked about. We don't know who has or hasn't been there. Well, and what do we really what do we what do we really mean by the ends of the earth? Exactly. And what do we really mean by the gospel's been proclaimed? Right. Mm-hmm. So and 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 as maybe we focused in one area and made a lot of progress, right? Just hundreds of millions of Christians in Africa now. Praise God, right? That's a tremendous thing. There's hundreds of millions of Christians um, in South America. Like you know, South America has had a real revival um, over the past thirty years. Okay, praise God. Uh, so how are things going in Europe, friends? How mm-hmm. how how are they going in Europe? How's it going? Um, um, not well. It, it's kind of like we make gains over here and, you know, lose in other areas because uh-huh. the focus gets shifted outward and you quit focusing on it's, it's, you know, it's like, it's like uh, when people are talking about giving aid to people or just recently I heard someone say, why are we sending so much aid over there when we should be taking care of the, the people here and we should, we should think about us first and then deal with them. And it's like, okay, I get what you're saying, but why is it a this one or that one instead of in both? And I think it's kind of that situation of when we're looking at spreading the gospel out there, we have to also maintain the fact that it needs to be spread, demonstrated, and exhibited here as right. well. Well, and that, like, to both non both literalized and not literalized ends of the earth, right? Well, yeah, especially since it's, you know, a big, huge sphere. <laughs> it's a big, huge sphere, so there are no edges, A. Eh? Right. It's, it's round. It's a largely round object. Um, but also it is making sure the gospel is reaching the places it is not currently reaching. Yeah. And so where it's current, there are, I believe, still some, you know, small isolated communities and places like Indonesia where the gospel really hasn't reached in a formal sense. But for the vast majority of the Earth's population at this point, um, communist China is another place where we just really mm-hmm. struggle. It's illegal there, right? Like, um, <laughs> And so there are definitely that kind of mission effort still remains vital to this day, right? I don't want to... I, I don't I'm not saying we don't need to do there are people who say we don't need to do that anymore I think those people are wrong yeah um, but we also need to transform our definition of mission um, and and what it means to go may what it means to go to the ends of the earth because there are communities here in the US um, that think they have heard the gospel but don't think it's good news and therefore mm. I don't think they've heard the gospel I don't yeah. think we've done a good job reaching them if they don't think it's good news Um Got a couple of great comments here in the chat. Um, can you imagine how po- how impossibly that would seem if if someone ever showed them just how big the Earth is, right? Especially like in those days where you oh, where all you have is like walking horse, donkey, or ship pace. 
um, the concept of the, how big how big our sphere is. You know, it was you know the Vikings vaguely figured it out, but you know, yeah, and that was hundreds of years later. And then, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. Yes, uh huh. Welcome, yeah, welcome to it. Welcome to the Book of Revelation. Um, if you want to know my thoughts on that, there's a whole series on our Facebook page of Sure Looks Like the End Times, uh, which is a lot of like encouraging to hold on it's not always going to look better sometimes it's going to look worse and that's just part of what it means to be patient and hold on um but we as christians need to live in live in a space similar to how it was between pentecost day ascension and pentecost day um and not lose sight of our mission and or and also not give up on it if it doesn't look like it's going well Right. I think that like there's a real like, oh, I just want to condemn a modern American culture. Well, sure. I mean, there are plenty of aspects of modern American culture that absolutely blows. <laughs> I, I, I don't disagree with you, but welcome. Welcome to the mission field, friends. Mm-hmm. Um, the mission field be challenging. Um, but if the gospel is supposed to reach the ends of the earth, maybe this is the ends of the earth right now. I, uh, I was at a church uh, as you go walking out the door. There's a sign over the uh, it's essentially the same entrance and exit door, but as you're walking outwards over the door, it said you are now yeah. entering the mission yes. field. Yes, uh-huh. and, and, and that's true. You know, our mission field, uh, uh, especially as Christians here, uh, it's not always just missionaries that are going overseas. It's not always just pastors. You know, we've been talking about this, of how that's the point of the series, that it is for everyone. Everyone is a part of that commission of go and tell. Well, right, because it's all, the entire church, everyone who follows Jesus is assembled there and gets this mission. And everyone who follows (laughs) Jesus is there in that room at Pentecost, right? It was not like, um, it is not just the 12. It is not just the select few. Yes, there are leaders. um, And yes, we have different roles, (laughs) but everyone is given this mission. Um, I, you know, some of this is like my own ax to grind of like, particularly as a young pastor, I am often walking into situations of going, well, how are you, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to bring in the young families? How are you going to make it all better? And I'm like, I'm not going to, we are going to. And if we are not going to, then a lot of us are missing out on the joy of serving God. Yeah. It's wherever you are. There's a great comment in here. Let's see how many different ways is there to spread the gospel? Then again, how many different ways did Jesus use to cure the blind? No one miracle was ever repeated the same way. Ergo, there's no set path to spread the word, maybe. Well, right. And there's no one, sil- no one, sk- and this is, it gets into Paul stuff, right? We talk about a lot. There's like no one skill set is more valuable than another. Right. Right. Um, that I, I, I get that like. And then, you know, this is what I literally what I do for a living. Right. Uh, and so there's a lot of like talk about Jesus in public settings. That's really helpful. OK. Yeah, totally. Um, but that's not the only way to spread the gospel. That's not mm-hmm. the only way the gospel is spread um, in the gospel. It's not the only way Jesus spread the gospel. It's not right. the only way, you know, you, you look at the contrast that we've looked at this. Right. So um, we see a lot of Peter doing public preaching and that bringing thousands. OK, rad. Yeah. But Philip doesn't. Philip just sits with a guy in his chariot for right. presumably hours um, and talks to him and talks him through his questions. And so it's this like really deep and really intimate thing. Um, and then you see Peter with Cornelius and, he, and there is some public speaking to it, but it's the just showing up and saying, I, you know, God said I should love you and I'm going to do that even though it confuses me, but I love you. And so let's do that. Right. That, Part of what we've been trying to tease out in this series is, A, everyone needs to do this. Yes. This is for everybody. This is not just my problem. This is not just Scott's problem. This is not just the ministries team's problem. Um, and, this, and this is not just like Christian leaders, right? Because our church is doing fine. Um, but this is about that if we look at the state of Christianity and say, man, there's a problem with Christianity in America. Yeah, there absolutely is. But if you're looking for where the solution comes from, the solution comes from where it has always come from, (laughs) the spirit moving in us. There is no other option. Yeah. We're the plan. As I've often said, we're the plan, friends. Yeah. Um, You know, uh, one of the comments says, but some are called to different places. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Those places could be at work. They could be in the line at Walmart. It's being open 
to what the Holy Spirit does, which is exactly where we're left in this verse, right. is them waiting, not really knowing what they're supposed to do for the Holy Spirit to show them. And that's the dichotomy where we are supposed to live our daily life. Is Yes, we're supposed to be seeking God, we're supposed to be praying, we're supposed to be watching, but we're always supposed to be open for that that we don't know yet that he wants to lead us to do. Right. And to understand that we're going to we're going to be led by God, but understanding and internalizing that is something for all of us yeah. to do. Right? That we love to carve out those special categories. And here in here in the ascension and next week in Pentecost, it's everybody's there. Um it's not a select group. And so we need to start to rethink what mm-hmm our lives as Christians yeah. look like that there is certainly like a worship component and, and the being fed component. And, you know, I spent a lot of time feeding Christians, right? Like I get it. That's really important, <laughs> but we're being fed for something, mm-hmm. right? We're being fed for something. We're being fed for mission, right? Like um, we, you know, gather at church to be fed so that then we are ready to, and this is key, go out and oh, do, the, do thing, the thing, right? That we get this really, con- like I th- you want to know what I think the downfall of the American church is right now? It's consumerism. Yeah. It's that consumeristic church. Oh, I just, I go to church to be fed. Yes, please. Yes, that's what we're here to do. But <laughs> if you are just being fed, you're missing step two, which is to then take what has been poured into you and pour it out into the world. Amen. I uh, often challenge people when I hear them <laughs> talk about the... the the issues that they see with their current church or I just don't know if I'm getting anything out of that. And I'm like, well, have you prayed to see if the reason you're noticing these things is because maybe you're to be part of the solution? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Um, or, uh, you know, that's, that's a, I, I'm not sure that's a, I'm not sure that's always a, a, a damning thing on the church. Um, that might, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as Emily often says, like, if you want to get something, you want to be fed in worship, show up with a fork, right? Like, uh, yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, we believe we're two Ex- or more expectations, right? We believe that we're two or more gathered there. God will be, if there are more than other, there, there are more than two people in worship that day. Well, do you think they're all not Christians, <laughs> right? Like, do you think God didn't show up, right? Uh, some of that is, some of that is. Ah, that's an interesting right, thought, you know? Right? It's like, well, if he didn't show up, then there maybe weren't... the people there need to be saved. <laughs> maybe, maybe a lot, maybe there's a lot of people that need saving. If you're in a room of 50 to 100 people and you don't think God showed up, like, I don't, maybe, maybe. Um, that's not on the church <laughs> or maybe it is. And we got a lot yeah. of work to do. All right. My voice is like, yeah. e- either way it is, uh, by the movement of the Holy spirit. And, uh, that foreshadows in this verse and foreshadows next week's episode next yeah. week, next week, the fall of the Holy ghost. Yeah. Next week, uh, for the end of the, the two part season opener for, uh, for season three of the book of Luke, uh, <laughs> is Pentecost. And hopefully my voice will be back by then. I'm not optimistic. Um, if you have a uh, feedback for us, please, 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 uh, post it here on our Facebook, uh, Facebook page over on our YouTube channel, over on our website, palestinegrace.com slash videos. Um, you can send us an email at grace church, palestine at gmail.com um if you are looking for an audio only version of the show it is available it just means i sound even weirder um just search the scripture talk by grace church and your podcatcher of choice and we will be back next week uh with another ep- with with the the epic uh, finale to the two-part season opener uh pentecost um and we record if you want us live we, we record live uh 6 p.m um every monday evening also, uh, go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Fear not, stay well. God is with us. Hit the button. There we go. But <laughs> it's dancing and it's singing. <laughs> Nobody can see us dance because we've crossed over 23,000 frames. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, we've had a bunch. <laughs>